Hello, Ustaz Hukum Ibuan. I think I will check first to find actually live. I will check if I am already live. I'm gonna check this out. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's gonna be a pretty slow day because most of the students are doing their exam. So this field exam week. So hopefully some of the students can join. Okay, I can see three viewers. I guess I'll wait. I will wait about five minutes. Okay, I can see five viewers. Thank you for coming. And yeah, just a headshot. It's going to be pretty. I'm not, I'm not expecting a lot of students because uni students are still doing their exam week. Okay, just ahead, I'm going to give shout out to anyone who are watching this in the rerun. So, hello, hi, thank you for watching. And if you missed the first part, um, or if you missed the entire thing, you can always rewatch it. Yeah, for coming. I guess I will start now. So today, uh, by the way, introduction, my name is Naja Mamad. I'm a trainee counselor in Unit 10 SGU, Student Guidance Unit. So today I uh, will be talking about exam boost, managing time and stress. So time and stress are something that you are still struggling, especially at this. So now we will try to explore how to uh, efficiently manage and efficiently handle our own time and stress. So first we start with time so the race against time always rest so there are few steps that we can do to manage our time and uh, one two three four five six there are six steps that we can do first is prioritizing the task get organized overcome procrastination let go of perfectionism managing disruptions and set smart goals so I will explain each of these um, categories. So first is ABC prioritizing. ABC prioritizing, uh, we first need to have a to-do list. We break the larger task into the smaller one. And how do we break it up? We prioritize them by A, B, C. So A is the bigger word, and then B is the smaller, and C is the smaller one, is the smallest one and we delegate tasks appropriately which is a which one is c which one is c and we have to set deadline for each task in order to uh, motivate us to um, finish the task within the time limit and also we also need to consider our own routine for example if we feel more energized 
more focused during the morning then we start the most demanding task or more most challenging task in the morning so organize to-do list so once we have our abc priority we need to know that a is something that we need to do it now so anything that is the most prioritized we need to put it at a category a and then b is something that you can do after you have done with a and see something that you can do at any time. So if you look at the, uh, there is a quadrant. And if, if you look at the quadrant, there is, uh, your task can be divided into an important and urgent one. So if you can see A, it's both important and urgent. So there is a deadline, which is probably presentation tomorrow. So you need to schedule this at work. So your task is actually finishing the slide before sleep. So A is both urgent and important. And B, B is something that you can do after you have done with A. So B is could be important, but not as urgent. So probably you have paper due by next month or paper due by next week. You also need to do some planning, some calls and requests. So it could be also your planning for vacation time for example and C C could be urgent but not important and another part is C could be not urgent and not important urgent but not important could be interruptions probably from your friends from family members from your lecturer from your supervisor disruption could be probably from your pet um, disruption from something breaking in your house or something and Another one could be some phone calls and the most uh, re relevant example would be uh, when your friend asks for help, probably from their own assignment, from their own work. So this could be part of the interruption, which could be urgent but not important. And C, which not urgent and not important could be uh, trivial, busy, uh, some busy work and time waste. So this is something that we need to avoid prioritizing. We don't want this to be our priority. For example, gaming and online, we should not prioritize this. We could do it if we have enough time to do A, B and the important part, uh, the more urgent part of B. So for part number three, overcoming procrastination. First, we need to recognize the pattern of our own procrastination. For example, when uh, what is the time we tend to have procrastination? Uh, for example, we tend to procrastinate in the evening because we feel more tired. So we need to evaluate and uh, diagnose our own procrastination. When um, and once we probably jot down and notice when the procrastination of how often do we procrastinate or why do we procrastinate then we can break the larger task into smaller ones we also can schedule a specific time to do the harder task for example there are reasons that we could probably um, probably struggling for example we don't like the task the task is too hard to start or we have fear of failure we have the tendency to be uh, to, to, we have the tendency to need everything to be perfect so most of the time it's hard to start so we need to address the reason and think about the reason and diagnose why we are procrastinating then we start the to do uh, the to do list once we have the to do list break into small part and then we can motivate ourselves by giving reward uh, giving reward for starting and finishing for example if I finish five questions by now I can have one chocolate. If I can finish uh, one whole page, I can have five minutes of um, Instagram, five minutes of TikTok, something a little bit like that. So reward yourself after you starting or after you finish it. So overcoming perfectionism. So some of us really have this kind of problem. We want everything to be perfect, but at the end, we never start anything or we, we never finish anything. We always uh, to focus on little little things. So be aware of your own tendency to analyze and reframe your self-talk. 
you focus on big picture, ask what's really needed right now. For example, you have different disease who say, oh, I might fail this. My slide doesn't look as good as any other people. My assignment looks too short compared to my friend. So this is some of the self-talk, negative self-talk that is not helpful. So we need to be aware of it. And we, we need to make sure what you really need. Do you need it to be perfect? Do you need, uh, do you need them to be perfect? Do you need them to be um, to be really bombastic or do to really finish it within the time, uh, time limit? So maintain a high but attainable standard uh, and be realistic with what you can accomplish. For example, you want to finish five page uh, in two hours. Make sure it's realistic. So five five page in two hours could be real uh, could be possible, but at the same time, do you have the same quality? So you need to be realistic. So seek help when needed. So sometimes we do need help. Maybe lecture your friend, even your own family member. So be sure to seek help and don't throw away your work. Sometimes when we don't like what we're doing, we already start something we don't like it, and then we just start over another topic, just start over another assignment. We don't really think about the one that we have done. So what we can do is don't throw it away, just replant, revise, revamp, like alter the work that we've done. And managing disruption. Disruption is something that could be urgent, but not as important as our priority. Like I've said before, it could be interaction from your friends. They could call you to ask for some help. It could be from your family member. They also need some help or some suggestion or some decision, or they just uh, want to be around you. And you need to likewise identify recurring interruptions and distraction. So you need to identify whether normally you get disruption from friends or family or even your pet or your lecturer. So if you can see the pattern of interruption or pattern of distraction, keep a log of it. So identify it, you write it down and learn to say no. Learn to say no. Once, once you keep log of uh, the thing that disrupt you, or distract you, sorry, I don't know if you can hear the word. I'm so sorry about the noise. Um, and yeah, learn to say no. Once you keep the log, you can see how many times you've been interrupted by some other people. And you choose to say yes, and you can see how how's the distribution of yes and no. So learn to say no. You can always be like, but more assertive. And yeah, be strict with your stand also. Because you do have your own priority. Just focus on your priority, your number A, your your letter A, priority number A, priority A, and yeah, because because disruption is number C. Make sure make sure you prioritize your A first. So establish available and not non available hour. You can try to turn off chat. You can try to disable your apps. So these are some of the things that you can do to set your own boundaries. Especially when you have disruption or distraction from other uh, other things, especially social media. So set limit with with necessary interruption. For example, some interruption can be necessary, especially when your friend are asking for help. Could also help you in the long run to uh, for you to also gain gain the knowledge from what you're asking. So that could be necessary. And, and yeah, avoid taking too much. Know your own boundary and set the limit. Uh, set the limit on what time uh, you can take, uh, how, uh, what time, what period you can take, uh, you can help with your friends and what period you cannot uh, take on other, um, uh, take time to help other people and try to focus on just yourself first. And smart goal. Smart goal are something that um, sorry, just something is happening. 
with the light. I hope it's okay from here. It looks weird on my other face, but hopefully it's okay from the other side. Okay. Let me see if it's working correctly. Okay. Um, not sure what happened there. Mm. Um, hold on, I just need to make sure I'm still alive. Because it's kind of like lagging from this side. Okay, it's okay now. Okay, creating smart goal. Be specific. What are you going to do now? How are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? How often you need to focus on uh, the task at hand? For example, if you have um, if you have an assignment, you need to finish within this week. So, how many pages you are going to do today? How many page? How many words do you think you can do by tomorrow? And how often do you need to focus on the task, the assignment at the moment? Every single day, how many hours do you think you can spend on the assignment? So be very specific with your goal, measurable, concrete criteria for progress. So anything uh, like like the specific part, measurable can be uh, the number of hours you need to spend in a day, or the number of pages you want to write in a day, or the number of words you need to write in a day, or it could be anything that could be measured. So anything specific and that you can be measured. So attainable, something that you can accomplish. It should be realistic, not too easy or not too hard. So it is something that could help you reach your goal as needed. And relevant, make sure your current goal is relevant. For example, you have one assignment uh, which you need to finish by this week. But you have another priority, which is um, maybe some video you need to do uh, by this month. But you are too focused on the video or anything else that are not supposed to be your pri priority A. So make sure your priority at the moment are relevant to the uh, to to your value interest or um, the time limit that are set. So make sure um, you prioritize anything that have the deadline first. And time, feeling point and deadline. So set your own deadline. Okay, for example, you have assignment you need to submit by the uh, by this week. So you set your own time limit, your own deadline. I need to finish it a few hours before the submission. I need to finish one day before the submission. I need to finish two days before the submission. So set your own deadline so it can motivate you to do well and plan well for that. So moving on to stress. So before we move on to stress, do you guys have any question about uh, managing time? Do you have any question about managing time? Oh, I can see some uh, down comment. Perfectionism plus disruption. Uh, perfectionism plus disruption. Procrastination. Yes. So we uh, when we want everything to be perfect, we want everything to be better than everyone else. Plus, when there are some other interruption, it could lead to procrastination. True. Thank you, my Sarah, for your comment. Okay, another comment. Distraction already playing out real time. <laughs> okay, so yeah, distraction in uh in form of fireworks. Okay, so no question. We can move on to stress. So what to do with stress? Achieving stress management in comfort. 
So, do you are you not sure where to release your pent up stress? So, yeah, let let's check it out. <laughs> so, self check. Lately, have you dressing out? So, write in the comment what's your current stress is about. So, do you have any stress? For example, self disclosure. The thing I'm stressing out about today probably. Um, I don't have enough food to eat, so I'm really stressed out, and I could not even go out to eat. So that is my current stress. So what about you guys? Do you guys have any stress? Oh, assalamualaikum dan salam ayat fitri as you like have to. Assalamualaikum, Puan Husni. Thank you for coming, uh, Dr. Husni. Thank you for coming. So yeah, back to our case. Do you guys have any any stress? You can uh you can write your stress while I talk about uh the topic as well. So what is stress and what is stressor? So stress is a person respond to events that are threatening or challenging. So stressor is the stimulus that can uh cause stress for example the stressor uh, uh for example my situation right now is but the stressor is not enough food so the stress is so i'm experiencing stress because i don't have enough food so that is the example of stress and stressor so one of the comments say i haven't studied enough can go out with friends and exam is around the corner So yeah, this is some of the concern that every student might have experienced at this one. So when you haven't studied enough, you have to rush, rush through um uh finish line, and you have to rush the revision also. So you need to spend more time studying and can go out. So we can actually relate that. Oh, and my Sarah say I'm stressed the last night debate for Dana. Oh. I think most of us are also stress about it. It it's like we we don't really get any benefit from the debate. <laughs> But I'm not talking too much about politics. Thank you for your comment. Okay, it's all stress bad. So moderate level with moderate level of stress, we can actually improve our performance and efficiency. If too little stress, it could lead to boredom. It could lead to um. Demotivation. It could lead to uh, feeling like you don't have to improve yourself. So actually, with moderate level of stress, for example, you receive pressure from your own classmate to do well for your assignment. You receive pressure from your own it or your own coworkers to do well for some of the project or some of the tasks that you you get. So it. In a way, it improve your performance and efficiency, and also improve your own capability and ability. So, but with too much stress, it could be unproductive, and it could increase your anxiety level as well. So, make sure your level stress level is moderate. So, if you know your level of stress, once you once the stress becomes and uh, be, makes you unproductive, that is when You notice it could be because too much stress. So, okay, hi, hi, Missila. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Okay, now I'm going to talk about sources of stress. So first, it could be individual individual factor, be your own family issue. Some of it could be financial issue. It could be your own personality. Some of us could be too introvert, too extrovert, too timid, too um, too strict, too angry. It could be our own personality as well. So it could be factor from the stress could be from organization factor also. It could be from too touch, uh, too much task or too much role. It could be from interpersonal demand. It could be from organizational structure. It could be maybe clashing from the leadership. 
it could also be part of the organization life stage. So for environment environmental factor it could be economic environment as well the prices everywhere are raising um and we are going to have food shortage soon so it could be one of the main source of stress it could be our own political environment like we have mentioned before it could be also from the technology and individual differences could also be part of the source of stress for example one person perception could be different from another person perception and each person job experience could be different from another as well as not all of us can have social support that we need and locus of control some of us does not have um the strong locus of control internal or external so it could lead to some of the stress uh, it could also be some of uh Some of stress could be also from the self-efficacy and hostility. So experiences with stress. Once when we experience stress, it could be, uh, lead uh, it could lead to some physiological symptoms. For example, we could have headache, we could have high blood pressure, heart disease. So this is what happens if we do not treat the high level of stress immediately. If we left Uh, if we struggle with high level of stress all the time, this could happen. And from psychological symptoms, we could have anxiety, depression. We can have less job satisfaction. From behavioral part, we could experience loss of productivity. We could uh, have absenteeism, absent. at synthesism which means we are not present at any moment always feel like we're not we always feel like we're somewhere else we don't think present at the moment and it could be uh it could lead to turn over as well when we finally give up with uh, our own routine and our own uh, daily um daily life so make sure you understand the difference between eustress and distress eustress is healthy healthy level of tension happy levels of stress so too little like uh, the first part the first part too little stress could lead to inactive and boring but a healthy level of stress could help you focus motivated and also keep you at your peak performance that when you reach certain level certain threshold of stress it could be part of distress which is very unhealthy for you it could lead to fatigue exhaustion it could lead to panic anxiety anger and finally once it all the stress overload it could lead to breakdown and burnout so make sure once you are at the peak performance you don't take too much which cause you too much stress make sure you stop and to yourself to be aware of your stress before it leads to fatigue so know your uh, have your own awareness so yeah some of us say wow never know about the term you stress before so yes as we know there are good uh, healthy level of stress and unhealthy level of stress further stress with self inflicted high standardism yeah some of us have has a very high standard especially to our own self so in order for our self to not be too tired with our own standard because we said uh, we want everything to be perfect uh, we need to manage the stress so how can we manage the stress okay before that there are also three types of stress these three types is where we need to be focused We need to start ask for help. We need to start seeking the right uh, channel on where how to treat it. Acute stress is more common short term and come on suddenly. So once you experience acute level of stress, it come in a very short term, but you already experience a heavy level of uh, symptoms. For example, headache. You feel like your heartbeat is too fast. You feel like um, 
you feel restless all the time, it's part of the acute stress which happens suddenly and in short term. Once you feel acute, you have to immediately seek for help. Maybe from uh, maybe you can see some physical doctor or you can go through your own counselor as well. Episodic stress is when people are overloaded with responsibilities and schedule. Sometimes people who experience episodic stress, they have the tendency to break down. And once they are not treated, if they are not treated, it could lead to chronic stress, which is long-term exposure to stressor. So make sure every of uh, every single of every single one of us are not never going to experience chronic level of stress. So yeah, like I said before, your the stressor would be rooted from a lot of different places, probably from traveling, probably from your relationship, probably from medical aspects, probably from home or from work. It could the stressor could be uh, could be from anywhere. Just make sure you can identify which one is your stressor. So the worst type of stressor is internal stressor. Internal stressor is the stress you put on yourself, which is negative self-talk. Uh, you mostly uh, you mostly are not confident with yourself. You have low self-esteem. You feel like you cannot do it. You feel like you might feel if you if you try to do it you feel like you're not as good as other people so negative self-talk is unhelpful for us in the long run so make sure you revise oops, sorry make sure make sure you really revise with yourself and think about whether you have always whether you have the tendency to have negative self-talk or do you have a more helpful talk to yourself Mind trap. Mind trap if is when you are struggling with your uh, ability uh, by comparison with other person. It's always um, trapping you in a box, kind of like put you in a boundary and not going out of that box. You don't let yourself out of that box and be more uh, and find your or your own potential. So this is part of the stress, internal stress as well. And the third one is personality trait. It could be um, your, uh, it could like like before. It could be perfectionism. It could be you are more detailed person. So any any personality trait that treat everything with detail or tend to have focus on even the smallest smallest detail. It could. Be part of stress as well even though some of it necessary but most of the time it could be unnecessary as well so be aware of your own internal stressor so if you can uh, if you can detect this um, from early on you can help manage um, the stress before it becomes uh, worse over time so negative side effect of stress so I've talked about it before and I talk about this in more detail. First, it could lead to physical side effects. For example, you can have weight gain or weight loss. You can also experience unexpected hair loss. Your heart palpitation can go up. You can have high blood pressure. This is on the physical part. The psychological part, you can have mood swing. You can have anxiety. You can have overthinking. You can have negative thoughts and it could lead to depression. It could also lead to unhealthy coping strategy. Some of the examples of unhealthy coping strategies could be like um, you opt to use substances, um, so for example, drugs, alcohol, too much food, binge eating. So some of it could be unhealthy coping strategies for you to cope with stress. And third one, the, um, once you experience the stress, it could affect your cognitive ability as well. Uh, if you if you let the stress become distressed, it, become, uh, it can affect your decision making, it could affect your problem solving, critical thinking. All these three are very important 
in our daily life uh, not only as student but as someone with career as well or even someone uh, who interact um, even in the interaction in daily life as well we need these skills so make sure your you stress doesn't become distress so how to do it how to not make it until it become distress how to prevent the distress from happening so some of the stress relief strategy you can do is uh, first the relaxation technique so breathing technique breathing technique is something that is very helpful for a lot of things for example it could help with panic attack it could help whenever you are starting feel uh, starting to feel overwhelmed it could help when you feel the nervous uh the nervousness of public speaking something like that and breathing technique could be really flexible it could seem pretty simple it could sound very simple but at the same time uh it could really help in so many different situations as well so whenever you feel stressed and feel overwhelmed all this thing around you just find a space that you can sit down and be relaxed and try to breathe in and breathe out and you do it several times until you feel like you can just focus on your breathing at that moment just focus on your breathing i believe it could uh it i believe it had helped me a lot with my own uh with my own stress as well over the time so i stand by this technique the breathing technique and guided imagery guided imagery uh could also help us for example we still could practice breathing technique and also guided imagery so once we are in the relaxed position we can imagine ourselves probably running through the beach or we could uh just imagine ourselves laying down on the grass or we could imagine ourselves playing with kittens could imagine also anywhere we want and have that moment just feel moment just for yourself imagine you can be at anywhere you would like at the moment and hopefully it can help release some of the stress you feel at the moment it doesn't have to be too long it could be 5 minutes it could be 10 minutes could even be just 3 minutes so if you can practice body relaxation exercise at any point whenever you feel stress and with practice i think it will be easier over time to let yourself uh be more relaxed and um be distracted from that that kind of stress and stress in your life so the second point is physical exercise so what you can do is whenever you feel stress you can practice yoga you can practice pilates you can practice zumba or you can have your own workout routine so some of us like to jog some of us like to take a long walk some of us like to dance some of us like to uh just probably um walk around and look at the uh, atmosphere just absorbing uh the the trees that whenever we pass um the the garden or something so anything physical any any chance you can have by moving your body it could also help will help you with the stress relief also so three three meditation so meditation could means a lot you you don't even have to sit down and just like mm, um that is a very traditional way of practice meditation you can also practice mindfulness mindfulness is pre- probably easier way of uh, do, uh of experiencing the awareness mindfulness could help you in uh, also stress relief for example when you are eating you focus on the taste you focus on the weight of the food on your hands you focus on the taste of the water you can focus on the temperature of your food you can focus on the sound of the fan 
you can focus on the sound of the your your the fabric against your body so mindfulness could be part of meditation also you don't even have to be static you don't even have to be uh, sitting down by practice meditation uh, by practice mindfulness uh, within meditation uh, you can always try uh, you can just be at somewhere else just focus on all your senses focus on the um, on the on the sound on the touch on what you can smell so it could also release some of the stress by having you be present at the moment instead of focusing on the stressor and and yeah lastly you can also go to counseling because help doesn't always mean physical help it could always be uh, it could always mean also your mental health so make sure you have uh, your mental health checkup uh, by going to talk therapy or life coach or you can find any counselor available uh, you don't even have to wait and you f- uh, feel the distress you or uh, whenever you have uh, whenever you need to talk to someone that is probably going to help you uh, uh, probably just renting or something you can always find a counselor or someone who can uh, a more professional uh, mental health profession that can help you with your stress or even before it becomes stress you can always come and talk about it and yeah be kind to yourself make sure that you know you do have your own emotional needs as well so journaling by journaling could help a lot because i think a lot of us have problem identifying some of our emotion sometimes our emotion are pretty irregular sometimes we don't even know what we are thinking so by journaling we can jot down what we are feeling at the moment we don't even have to write we can even draw draw what we are feeling at the moment or we can also like find some pictures that represent our feeling so you can be creative with it you can you can do anything you want just to represent what you are feeling and journaling could help a lot in the long run as well so the second one perception so be kind be kind to yourself sometimes we have this negative thought for example i hate this subject or i could not do it so make sure that instead of this perception we change it to a more helpful a more helpful perception so i'm sorry for example instead of i hate subject we use it's okay to take time to learn this so it's okay for us to do anything at our own pace it's okay not to be uh it's okay to be slow and uh, not be as fast as anyone else so be kind to yourself and make sure you have me time anytime you need it you make sure you prioritize yourself first because your health uh your well-being is the number one that matters the most and don't be afraid to talk to someone even though you think like um uh maybe you think your problem is not as big as someone else but any uh but any single every single thing that experience could be actually be really uh, how they say this be really significant to you so don't downplay yourself just make sure you talk to someone make sure you reach out and don't be alone in your journey and don't be afraid and and yeah set boundaries make sure you don't take too much you don't be the yes man make sure you learn to say no and set this boundary for yourself and yeah step away from screen from time to time you can take a nap or you can walk outside to refresh your brain especially during this exam time and yeah like my sorry say walk outside no more mask so we we can uh we can walk outside without mask now so we can go to the park and just absorb the cold nature 
air outside so yeah so yeah this is uh, the last part of um, of my slide so we can do if you have your own phone you can try to scan uh, the code and make sure you sit in a comfortable position make sure you are ready if you're ready then you can close your eyes just listen it takes about a few minutes so if you can just focus on the on the sound there will be um real nice if someone if there are people who cannot stand i will share uh, my screen and then we can listen together mm. we can listen together I'm not sure if you can listen. Oh, I think <laughs> I think my um, background noise is louder. Let me adjust. I don't know if you can listen. But yeah, if you go to sevencups.com, you can find a lot of mindfulness exercises that you can try to listen. For example, there is one about anxiety, body scan, about breathing, about grief practice, energizing, guided meditation. So I think this page can be really helpful for beginner who want to who wants to try mindfulness exercises. So far, it has really helped me with my stress. I even listened to this doing uh, when I was doing my work. And also sometimes I listen this to sleep as well. So if you would like to experience uh, mindfulness exercise, you can go to sevencups.com and find the mindfulness page. Okay. I think that is all from my part. Oh, okay. I think that is all from my part and and thank you for listening. And if you have any question or any comment, you can write in the chat box. And meanwhile, I'm going to share my poster. So currently, anyone watching this live or anyone watching this uh, from the rerun, uh, we are currently doing our counseling session with counseling service at SGU. If you are a UNITEN student, you can walk in. 
if you are a student from somewhere else, you can always contact me and just feel free to reach out and yeah, take care of yourself and your mental health as well. Thank you to my Sarah for coming. Okay, thank you for all the four viewers that stay with me from the beginning to the end. Hopefully, a lot of students can also benefit from this, uh, from this sharing through the rerun as well. So thank you. If you're a student, make sure you complete the score run form. Okay. Okay, thank you for coming and hopefully you can have a very good weekend and enjoy the break, the West Up break. And thank you, thank you, take care and stay safe. Thank you, Aina Izati. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks again and hopefully see you guys soon. Bye.